Like the man said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. The man never took into account transporter accidents in Janeway's torture chamber, but I suppose for me personally, I'm afraid of Neelix's stinky feet. Second to that is plots that heavily involve Harry Kim, and I guess I'm gonna have to confront that today as I go over the Thaw. This opening scene was actually shot for a different episode and then pasted into this one, so nothing of consequence happens, but we do find out that apparently the soundproofing on Voyager sucks ass. Kinda makes you wonder why no one ever hears the wild shit that's happening in the next room on a daily basis, but anyway, let's get to the actual episode. Heh <laughs> alright, who's going on report today? Janeway is delighted to hear that a nearby planet's population was wiped out by a solar flare 19 years previously, but her joy is quickly diminished when Kim announces they're being hailed. Somewhere in there, Neelix farts or something, I don't know. Your sensors have activated this message. A few of us have managed to survive in a state of artificial hibernation. There's still some survivors. Welly, well, well, looks like this won't be a bust after all. Paris, beam them up and prepare my torture instruments. Can I do anything stupid in the meantime, Captain? Shut up, Neelix. If I need something stupid, I'll beat it out of Chakotay. Can I assist you in the torment, sir? Sure, I could use someone expendable in case they put up a fight. I mean, we killed you off and replaced you with a parallel Harry two episodes ago and nobody cared. <sighs> Can somebody get that body out of here already? Yes, sir. Bring forth the hibernation pods. <laughs> All right, so basically, the computer connecting the pods has created an artificial environment for these aliens to ride out their solar flare apocalypse in. Except for the corpses, who apparently died. A fright, Ooh. I'm skimming over two very boring scenes, but basically that's what they find out. It wasn't left entirely to the computer. The programmers obviously want people in the system to dis- They gotta figure out how to bring these dumbos back. But if you want tips on waking up, Chakotay is not your man. Akuchi Moya? Noted. Tom, prepare the trapdoor. Only a technically-minded computer whiz and a logical Vulcan could determine that the best way to figure out this system is to jack themselves into the killer computer and ask the people inside what's up. <laughs> this makes sense. We could add a backup life support system using our own computer and medical testing. <laughs> I like that Tuvok suggested it, and then he's like, nah, you got this, Balana. Let's shove these corpses aside and we're in. A lot of crazy shit is gonna be happening on screen from this point on, so prepare yourselves. Behold! <laughs> a circus? I wonder if they'd let me play my clarinet here. No chance. Oh, let us out! You might have noticed that Michael McKean is a clown. No, uh, let me rephrase that. He's THE clown, and he's the boss around here. Yes, that's right. The villain of this episode is Michael McKean as a clown. I actually have no notes. That's amazing. <laughs> Sometimes Voyager wasn't a complete failure. This is all well and good, but so far, nothing here has been scary enough to kill anyone. Janeway is on the outside, so they're probably the safest they've ever been. A bunch of spooky dooky circus people in masks slither around. They force Kim and Torres into a conga line. I mean, I guess that's pretty traumatizing, but not that deadly. They up the ante when they threaten to cut their heads off. But I can't take things too seriously when I see Star Trek characters punching circus folk. <laughs> Please, there are people who would miss me. That's a lie and you know it. Lucky for Kim, the survivors show up and point out that if these two die, their shipmates could shut down the program. The clown decides to spare their lives, but not their drawers. Wrinkly gray bodysuits are the fashion of the future. Pretty soon, everybody's gonna be wearing them. I've accumulated so much sweat in here, it's like my own private pool. The clown is a pretty clever dude, but he also seems to think Harry's smart. So, I mean, AI will never truly replace us. I know you came here to get them, but if you do that, we'll all disappear. Disappear? Because your character is created by this program. Wow, way to figure out what you already knew when you jumped in, Harry. The clown holds a lot of power here. He might be computer generated, but if he scares someone bad enough, they could die for real. In a rare stroke of competence, Harry manages to convince the clown to let Bolana go. 
You see, this environment was created by the thoughts of the people in hibernation, and the clown is the manifestation of their fear. Whatever their fears are, he knows them, and at the top of the list is their fear they won't survive. He will stop at nothing for survival, even if that means tolerating Harry Kim. Fine, you can go, and you tell them our demands. We have but two. To exist, and to help seed our Laverne and Shirley Torrent. It's been sitting at 6% for over a decade now. Yeah, I'll do that. We're really worried if Harry comes back. Peace. Now we have the old Tuvix argument all over again. This computer needs a living brain to function, so they either have to kill the circus folk or leave someone in stasis permanently. On the one hand, Janeway loves killing things, but on the other hand, she does value computer programs more than her crew or randos caught in the crossfire. In the end, I think she just decides clowns are creepy, so fuck them. The problem is, how do you fight fear? Maybe we should try to make them laugh. <sighs> I hope Neelix comes up with a plan to rescue me soon. The clown knows everyone's deep, dark secrets. So this is a rare opportunity for us to get a view into Harry Kim's psyche. And what an embarrassment of riches there are to be found in there. We learn that, uh, he misses his girlfriend and plays the clarinet. That's something, right? Oh, and uh, he sees Janeway as his mom? She would never kill you, would she, Harry? No, she's like a dear old mother to you, isn't she? Goo 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 go, Captain! Take your nap or you're on report. That's silly. They wouldn't actually turn him into a baby in this episode. Oh, wait, right. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna lie, the Star Trek onesie is hilarious. <laughs> However, I found the old age makeup scarier. Harry Kim is not unlike us. He fears many of the same things. He fears old age, although I'm not sure why, because let's be real, he's never gonna see it. He also fears being treated like a baby, as the forever ensign of the crew. He'll always be a little boy, a hilarious little boy whom Voyager loves to bestow misfortune upon. And aren't we all scared little children in the end, with weird Oedipal complexes involving our superiors? Like the man said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. No! Sorry, fellas. Janeway says if anyone's going to kill Harry, it's going to be her. This scene is actually great. So, the doctor has been sent in to negotiate since his hologram status protects him from having his mind read. This seems mostly to annoy the clown. How am I supposed to negotiate if I don't know what you're thinking? I have a very trustworthy face. The doctor's the best. He's just the best. The real funny part here is that the clown truly doesn't know how scary Janeway is. In other words... Honey, you've got a big storm coming. This is how you know Janeway is evil. She could have sent the doctor in from the beginning, but she chose to let Harry and Bolana go in anyway because that was the funnier option. She would never kill Harry. Aw, oh, see, that just tells me that's what Harry thinks. That's sad. Somehow, I've lulled him into a false sense of security. It's time to teach him a lesson. Someone's about to get Jane Wade. Eventually, they figure out that due to something or other, they'll be able to disable the program piece by piece while the doctor distracts the clown. Harry feels the heavy burden of rejection as it becomes increasingly obvious the plot isn't about him anymore. There can't be a bigger loser than him right now. Except for that guy. Okay, so that didn't work. But the thing is, Janeway doesn't like negotiating with terrorists, except when it benefits her or she's feeling like it. She's gonna have to get into the clown's mind and turn the tables on him. And if anyone can scare the manifestation of fear itself, it's Catherine motherfucking Janeway. Capitalizing on the clown's fear of termination, they give him one minute to decide to either let the hostages go or they flip the switch and hope for the best. In return, he'll get to keep one hostage, Janeway herself. Oh, clown, you poor dumb fool. Well, well, well. If it isn't Mr. Hot Shit Clown, you think you're scary? I have such sights to show you. <laughs> oh man, even when she's talking about how fear can be a good thing, she looks like she's about to eat him alive. But of course, it was all a trick. This isn't Janeway, but a holographic image. Janeway is connected to the computer, but this is a mere facsimile of her evil. And even a pale copy is too much for the clown. 
he begins to feel cold. Janeway seeps into him right to his core, showing him that perhaps there is more to fear than fear itself. She is the Alpha and the Omega, the end of all things. He is artificial. She is pure, dark, nothing. I'm afraid. I know. <laughs> That's how they end the episode. I'm living. Don't fuck with Janeway, I'm telling you. I know. Okay, so I make a lot of jokey jokes, but I had fun with this episode. And I think a lot of people in the production did too. Director Marvin V. Rush was stoked about the story. The themes really resonated with him, and he was excited to create something so interesting and weird. And he was a great choice to direct. Since he'd primarily worked on Star Trek as a director of photography, he approached this episode with a real visual eye. Inspired by the works of Federico Fellini and the bright colors of the original Star Trek, the episode was vibrant and delightfully strange. The gray color of the clown was a nice contrast and made him stand out. Many of the extras were hired from Cirque du Soleil, and Michael McKean was specifically sought out to play the clown. And hey, I'm always down for more Michael McKean! He was excited to be on Star Trek, and by all accounts, the people working on this episode were thrilled with how it turned out. That being said, the episode was their second least watched of the season. Reviews I've seen are mixed, but some people adore it. Me personally, I'm a little split. The scenes outside of the clown's world are slightly boring, and it feels like they could have used this to explore Harry's character a bit better than they did, but the stuff with Michael McKean was really fascinating to watch, and I enjoyed all of the cool visuals. The episode felt ambitious, and for a show that liked to play it as safe as Voyager, it was refreshing. And honestly, I loved the scene at the very end. Some great acting from both parties, and Kate Mulgrew was terrifying. Voyager was at its best when it was honest. Chainway is pure evil. <laughs> the Thaw is an intriguing episode that allowed Voyager to play, and I think it's worth a watch. No clowning. <laughs>